So if you haven't seen my channel before, you'll probably be wondering why are you breeding crickets? <laughs> yeah, well look, I don't even know if I can get into that right now. No, I'm just kidding. So I have a lot of mouths to feed. Oh, you're also going to wonder why the hell I'm, I'm putting this on. Yep, I'm one of those guys. Embarrassing, I know. And I'm 35 years old. No. So actually, as you get older, you know, I never would have worn this in my youth. But as you get older, this is actually so handy to look in the direction I'm looking. So if I'm looking down, I've got more light, dark room. Anyway, the first question, why am I breeding crickets? I'll just turn it off for now. I don't need it right now. Why am I breeding crickets? I have a lot of mouths to feed. So I have, I mean, right now I'm going to showcase you some of the animals I have that need them. So... It all started with the conversation in my head of, it all started with ROI versus effort. So I, well, actually it was ROI versus effort versus cost. So crickets are expensive here in the bottom of the world. So if you buy them, they're really, I mean, I'm not going to go through the efforts of catching them. I will make a video actually about catching black field crickets, but you can buy them uh, in captivity. So for example, people breed them. You can buy them for your animals like leopard geckos, native geckos, um, water dragons, beta dragons blue tongue skinks, some of the more popular reptiles around the world. So for me, it was a question of, okay, well, I always wanted to breed them just to say that I can. Uh, and the second thing is, you know, breed them for food uh, so I can stop paying. It was like 40 bucks for 25 adult crickets. I'm like, that's not sustainable. So this episode, I'm just going to talk to you about crickets and that's it. And look, you can, uh, that's fine. If that's not what you're interested in, that's fine. Um, but I'll tell you what, I'm going to walk you through the whole thing of how I went through the journey of doing it. So, you know, I started off, it was like incredibly laborious and I was like, man, I'm never doing this again. And then it, I went through these like patterns of experience and thoughts along the way of like, okay, it's not so bad. Oh, actually this is a nightmare. Oh, I'm going through a lot of food. But then now I'm like, Actually, once you get a rhythm and routine with it, it's not bad at all. So right now I'm shaking. Right now you can see there's like the stages of crickets. So before we get into like how I do it and what I do, now it's 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 fucking easy. It really is. It's not hard. I mean, if I can do it, anyone can, right? And why should you do it? Well, first of all, you know, if you don't want to keep paying for crickets, it's not that hard. You just need you need five things. That's it. You need tubs, so plastic tubs. You need heating heat pads are fine or a heated room. You need food and they eat everything from fruit to dog food to vegetables. I mean, that's that's literally all you need to give them. Fourth thing is fourth thing is water. And that's basically it. Oh, sorry. And obviously laying dishes. Now we'll go through all of that. This is basically like a really extended how-to guide for crickets. And I've done it. And I've done it with only 25 adults. And I'll walk you through my strategy moving forward and how I think I can do it and sustain it. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put all these little pin heads into here. This is one of my tubs. So this is a raising, I'm going to call it a raising tub. So basically what, how it goes is my 25 adult crickets have all now died out because they obviously bred, they laid eggs, they died. That's it. That's the life cycle of the cricket. I didn't feed the adults out. I just wanted to get them to the point of getting the most eggs out of them as possible until they basically died from exhaustion of laying so many eggs. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know why. They would have just died from old age. But anyway, so they did all that. So now I've got like one, two, three, four, five, five bins right now. So that is what I need moving forward i probably need one more bin and the reason for that is one this is my um i'm going to call my raising bin so i'm going to keep these for future breeders these are going to be pinheads these are going to be future breeders and the reason why i'm separating them is because these aren't going to be fed out they're going to be specifically kept for future breeders the other thing as well is you're going to have a first generation first generation of crickets oh no way this one's like huh Shitting. You're going to have a first generation of crickets. That's the first eggs your adults lay. You want to keep those as breeders. You know why? Because they're going to be the oldest first. If you wait, if you feed those out, I know we get super excited and we want to feed them out straight away, but you actually want to keep them. The strategic thing is keep your first generation. So I've actually put aside 30 also bigger ones and you'll see what I mean. They're like probably about a centimeter or 10 mil long now. So they're going to be breeders as well. So you kind of break them up in generations because they all follow different cycles and different states. So you'll get your pinhead, then you'll get your next size, next size, next size until they're adults. So first generation, 30 of them out, breeders. And then this is my last, almost my last generation, also breeders. Everything in the middle, chop and change however I see fit. So I'll keep some as breeders, some as feeders, some as breeders, some as breeders, because I've got, I've got hundreds now. How it started, I started with a bin and all you need is paper towels at the bottom. I use paper towels. Some people use vermiculite or nothing, but I like paper towels because it's easy for cleaning. Paper towels, they get literally one real shallow dish with water. Sometimes people like gut load them with like reptile powder or calcium powder, but I was like, I don't need that. They're already, they're already quite gut loaded with all the diet I give them. So that's it, the paper towels. And then egg cartons. Sorry, I forgot about egg cartons because they hide in this. It's really easy to collect them. And they also, yeah, it just makes it feel safe, I suppose. Um, and keeps them separated and busy and get, gets them to climb around and stuff. I mean, I don't know like the exact intricate nature of what, crickets need from guts and enrichment and stimulus but you know it makes sense everyone does it and then the food that's it oh and obviously heating so i have mine on heat pads um i've just come out of winter and it's super fucking cold here but the heat pads did a good job still bred them 
Uh, in the summer, I won't need heat pads at all because it's super hot here. This room, basically a garage, gets quite good uh, balance of, doesn't get super hot and it doesn't get super cold. So it'll be like a steady light, probably like between 25 and 30 degrees. It would be good for the crickets. Um, so they'll breed all of summer and I'm just going to keep pumping up my populations and I'll probably get like two, three more tubs. So that's it. That's all I put in there. It's just literally this. Today they're getting carrot, mescaline greens and ground dog food just because it's at the bottom of the bag and that's all I give them. Like I don't go super crazy. So let's get these pinheads in here. I think there's like 35, 40 in here. And just gently in here. There you go. They're actually super cute this size, man. Like they're so small. Cute. I almost feel bad. At some stage they're going to be like fed out. Here's a lid for this. Already. Oh, there it is. This is me in a nutshell, honestly. So that's them done. Now the next one is also. So this bin here. I need to move these guys into a bigger bin because these guys are separate out. These are like, yeah, first generation breeders. These are my first generation breeders. Oh, yeah. Some guys having a drink of water. The thing you, mate, the thing you guys will realize about crickets is you have to constantly feed them because they eat each other. They do. They, they just can't help it. They're like carnivorous. And it doesn't matter how, it doesn't matter how much you feed them. Like, or even if you have a little bit of food in there, you need fresh food in there all the time because they just like I've gone, my adults, they just ate each other. Like every second or third day I'd go in and one would be like half eaten or two would be half eaten. So they bred, they laid eggs, but they also kind of like dropped in numbers um, over and over time. Did I put that? Is that dog food? Oh, there it is. Oh, there's my spoon. Fuck. I'm so honestly, man. I'm the most, I'm probably the most fucking unorganized reptile fucking keeper around. I bet you the spoon's in the, in the, in the bag. No, no idea. No idea. No idea where it is. There it is. Okay. Yeah, so you just constantly have to feed them. Feed them fresh food, dog food. Here we go. I'll give them some of this. Fresh. And like, even if they've got still dog biscuits in there, good. I still put fresh ground in there because I'm just like, I'm just, I don't want them to eat each other. So I'm going to add the other mix of breeders, the other big boys in here. Brother, here they are. And they're all good. So they're going to stay in here for a little bit longer just because they're still small so i can probably give them another well, how we're gonna call it maybe another week or two until they get to the next size and then i'll move them into these big bins and i'll kind of do a rotation now in here is what i need to uh a where am i going to put this this one goes down here this is the problem um this is my problem one and this is where i need this super dark black bin see black bin i've got like too much of a mix in here meaning that i need to um like collect some of them for future breeders i'm gonna call this my medium bucket because these are like these are second generation so they're medium sized um and that's what you do like it's kind of admin but it's also worth it in regards to man i'm gonna have, i might just have like crickets forever now i suppose maybe or until i like decide not to breed them but you know what i mean like i've i don't know it wasn't hard it wasn't hard and now i like i think i can do the rinse and repeat process with them this is the thing with crickets when they're they can be a little bit jumpy and sometimes hard to catch yeah so i've got too many varied sizes in here so i definitely need to split them up like i've got ones that are a lot bigger than like i've got pinheads and a lot bigger than others and that's because when i was rotating the egg bins i was putting like the later bins into already hatched buckets or bins and these are all things you learn guys like these are things that i've learned oh here's a big boy here's a big boy i need to put them i need to put them in my breeder this is so this is gonna be sorry this is gonna be one of my feeder bins because it's big and it's got quite a lot of big boys in here but i just need to take out some of the youngsters um just kind of make it like another colony it's basically just having multiple colonies going at one time because when remember like the other ones they're gonna die out when they lay all their eggs so you kind of need them going in rotation so you never run out of crickets we never run out of a generation so let's say first generation gets to adults they all lay then i've got a second generation backup breeders getting to that point and then once those all lay eggs and the second will come through and it's like a, basically a wave a wave of them coming through that's what you want to do with crickets now I know what you're thinking, fucking nerdy, yeah? Breeding crickets. But you know what? Uh, there could be other things I could be doing on a uh, Monday night, um, like watching Netflix all night or like monging out playing video games. But you know what? I My passion's reptiles, it's ectotherms. And I want to make sure that my animals are fed well, I suppose. Yeah, like I want to make sure that they have food. I also want to save some dosh and not buy live food all the time. And I also want to do this for you guys. Like I want to show you guys that you can breed crickets. It's not that hard. Like it's really, it really isn't. It's like a bit laborious, but 
once you get the rhythm i think to be fair the most laborious element of it is the food and, and it's not so much the food it's just like replacing the food because the food if they don't need all the food then it starts to stink and starts to rot so i think that's probably the most laborious part of it and that is just having to replace the food um every 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 second or third day you don't need to do it every day especially you know i use carrot like today i'm using carrot and mescal and greens and what will happen um tomorrow like the leaves are almost all eaten out and to the stalks and the carrots basically will nibble that i think um dog food is definitely something i have to keep an eye on um and that's because the dog biscuits rot if they're not eaten um and they just stink and they're not good you don't want mold in here oh, i think i can hear my skinks like moving around still it's like nine o'clock at night anyway yeah it's just these little guys that i need to kind of i'm using the spoon and you're like how the hell are you collecting with a spoon well i've got i've got the art the art of handling the cricket with a spoon no, I'm just very, very, like, I don't do erratic movements, which is, I just wait till they're, like, calm. They jump around. It's not the most efficient way of getting them out. And then I just tap them in, and they, they go on just fine. No dramas. So I want to get out as many of the little guys and the slightly bigger than the little guys, slightly bigger than pinheads out. And this will be my feeder bin. And it's basically because I want to make sure that I've got um, reserves in place with more of my other bins, you know? I've got future breeders uh different generations of future breeders and these guys are just going to be for like my leopard geckos for my tree frogs my ganks that's it i think it's really important to i think it's really important to do this once you know if you're a reptile keeper breed crickets once just do it once right do it for yourself i found it extremely uh fulfilling especially as a doing for the first time like i don't know i just like kind of enjoyed the process it wasn't hard it was just more like it was more discipline if anything it gives you good discipline because you have to do things every day and you kind of have to look out for the eggs and make sure all the crickets are healthy you actually you know don't tell anyone but i was actually looking out for the crickets more than my other animals because they needed a lot of attention um i was looking at them every day and i was making sure that they had enough water they had enough like fresh food i would do that with my my other animals but you have to remember a lot of my animals don't eat every day especially you know my old animals my blue tongue skink every second or third day water is always available but these guys it was like nah man these guys are voracious, like crickets are voracious and like i said earlier if you don't feed them they're gonna eat each other and you don't want that you don't want them getting carnivorous too soon causes other problems um yeah i'm just kind of looking around being like have i left enough feeders in here because i don't want to get to the point where this is like skinned there's only like 10 feeders in here. They're going to, that'll, that'll literally be, yeah, okay. All right, I think we'll leave it at that. This is my other future generations. Yeah, cool. All right, I'll give these guys some more food. Lots and lots and lots of food for the crickets. That's it. I mean, what else do you want to know? Ask me in future videos, man. Ask me if you guys got questions about anything regarding crickets or reptiles or any of my, my shit. That's why I breed crickets. Well, I have breed crickets because I need to stop spending money on live food and future generations. So yeah, this is my feeder bin. And I'll mark them on top. So I'll get a permanent marker and I'll kind of put... Yeah, and I've just started doing that recently because I like the idea of it. I like the idea of having... And it's really easy for visibility, right? I walk in and I'm like, okay, cool. So that bin's got an F on it, which means it's a feeder bin. That bin's got a B on it, which means it's a breeder bin. And there'll be a breeder bin and there'll be a feeder bin and a breeder bin, et cetera, et cetera. All right, what I'm going to walk you through now is how I set up the bins for all my crickets, whether it's the hatchlings, uh, you know, the pinheads, maybe the medium size next stage up or maybe the breeders it doesn't matter it doesn't matter how big the bin is or the small bin is you can do the rhythm of this routine this is what i've learned works or has worked for me now remember i have bred crickets from 25 and only 25 adults so i don't know maybe i'm onto something who knows so all you need is plastic tubs doesn't matter what anyone says plastic tubs plastic tubs with holes now you can do mesh on the top which some people do and i think they do that so that like crickets or pinheads can't get out but i just did holes at the very top they can't they can't seem to climb up the plastic very well you can also put like masking tape around the edges or around the sides and that does the job so that's it i put a paper towel on the bottom that's the base layer that's that's essentially what we're working with the next stage is going to be they get a water dish now some people will say oh you know soak paper towels in them or put things in there or they get actually their moisture out of like mandarin oranges kiwi fruit apple things like that because the crickets can drown i haven't had that issue yet and the crickets have been pretty good with just, I mean, I, I get it. They could definitely drown in a egg, sorry, a milk carton cat. They definitely could, but I've just done it. I mean, I tried paper towels and all that happened was the paper towel just absorbed everything. Um, and you know, you put it in there and that's fine, but it seemed to dry out a lot faster, especially in a lot more heat because I've got them on heat pads. And maybe it's a combination of finding that good balance of temperature and where I keep the tubs. Maybe that would not let the paper towel dry out as much, but essentially, I haven't had any issues with that but yeah they could probably they could drown like the pinheads could so that's fine 
I'm gonna put egg cartons in there. The egg cartons are solely for climbing. That's it, they climb and they hide them. They're also very easy for collection, especially as the adults, and you just tap them into the enclosures that you wanna feed out. So I kinda of get that, that makes sense. Egg cartons also like, they last forever as well. Now I've got, today I'm feeding them mescaline greens, carrot, and also like crunched up or ground dog biscuits. I don't have to do ground, it's just I use the bottom of the bag. That's it, because I'm gonna, you know, anything that I don't, doesn't go to my dog, essentially any leftover biscuits, the crumbs right at the bottom, I'm like, oh, I'll keep the last like 1% of the bag because it'll go for the crickets. And that's it, that's your setup. Really, really simple. Piece of piss. Now I wanna talk, I wanna link you back to when I, what I mentioned about ROI. So the return on investment for this, if it, you know, has been for me, it's like, okay, so I bought 25 crickets for 40 bucks and now I've got hundreds of babies. So let's say I have 150 babies. So that's, you know, from 25 crickets, that is, that's quite a few X's of return. So, you know, even if I had 25 adult crickets and I got 100 crickets, that's 4X return. So much, much more than that. I've probably got between like two and 300 and I've actually got another bin hatching now um, with more eggs. So it's probably like up to 500 babies potentially. But the return is definitely worth it. Like at first it was laborious, but what I've got from it in return is definitely far outweighed um, the work that I had to put in, I suppose. And even like just having, like maintaining it. Maintaining it is not difficult. Maintaining all these animals, like these crickets is not hard. And I could probably even have a two more bins going and it, would, it wouldn't be a problem. It's not hard. Once you get into the rhythm of it and, you know, I check them once a day and that's it. As long as they've got food and water and they're kind of clean, they've got things to climb on. That's it. That's my experience with crickets. I'll turn this off. It's probably getting a bit annoying. Yeah, that's it, man. That's it. That's me. I'm Max. Hello, I'm Mouse to Feed. Been obsessed with ectotherm since I was a kid and here I am still at 35. Quite obsessed with the idea of having these animals as pets. You know, I've got the native geckos, which is probably more of the obsession of, you know, the conservation element and just being able to work with some of the rarest geckos in the world. I feel like we're very fortunate to have access to them here, this part of the world. Probably like turn the light off now, let these guys all go to sleep. I mean, the nocturnal animals are out. This is just an empty enclosure right here. I'll put something in it. I'm just kind of letting it grow out. Leopard geckos, uh, I think they want to come out. But they're like, man, turn the lights off, man. Fucking night time. I like to think I'm pretty chill. Pretty chill, pretty chill uh, reptile keeper. I like this one. Stay tuned. Stay tuned for the next one.